Welcome, everybody, to Jomez Pro presents a PDJ National Tour event, which is the 2019 Delaware Disc Golf Challenge, presented by PDGA and Jomez Pro Patreon supporters. I am Eagle McMahon, joined here by Simon Lozat, and we're Crush Boys Commentary. Great intro, Eagle. Thank you very much. We are back. We have way better conditions. It cleared up for us. We have perfect low to mid 70s, no wind breeze whatsoever, and we have a sweet lead card for you guys. Yeah, so far we have myself, Ricky Waisaki, James Conrad, who has proven that he's on fire inside the circle, 100%, super solid stat right there. And this is a putter score, so you want to take advantage of every look you get. And Albert Tam, a new fan favorite from Estonia. You're not the only European here, Simon. No, Albert is actually a true athlete, and we've been sharing a, a Airbnb with him this week, and all I ever see him do is, like, do something to prepare him for being better. So I've been very impressed. His game's on point, and I'm excited, really excited to finally see him watch him play. Me too, Simon. Me too. From Boulder, Colorado, we have hole one, Eagle, par three, 450 feet. I'm going to be teeing off first. Right here, I am throwing a S-Line DD3. It is not a cloud breaker, just because at Worlds, I threw in one of my prototypes in Lake Eureka, so I had to throw this instead. Out of my hand, I really like this shot, but it hits that tree, kicks into the shul. Oh, yeah. yeah. Two time world champion, Ricky Waisaki, and this year's world's runner up. He's going to be opting for a turnover backhand with an 11 time Tiber, I believe. Oh, that almost was the perfect shot. He needed like a couple more inches wide there, and it would have been. Probably inside the circle, but for now, he's probably like 80 feet out. James is going a rock three here, which is a pretty slow disc for this, this type of shot. And he almost gets around the corner. We didn't see that off the tee pad, so he's going to be a little bit pinched off right. Albert here is throwing a Johnny Bravo Fusion Enforcer. He's thrown this a bunch when I was playing with him at European Open. And there's something about Estonians, guys. They have massive sidearms. And as you see, he proves it. That is very impressive. This hole is not even easy to get close to the circles, and he basically parked it. He did park it. He's very parked. Oh, and he he gets pushed closer. <laughs> now we know how he got that close. I have virtually the same shot as James. And I'm actually throwing the new Evolution Line link there. A disc that I'm really liking. If he forced to go upside down on his approach shot. Yeah, this course looking much friendlier today. It was it was really fun playing. It was it almost felt like playing indoors with it it was indoor golf today. That's what it felt like. In trees golf. I, I agree with Simon there. It was very enjoyable. The temperature was pretty much perfect, very low humidity. These are the days that you dream of, guys. We're on to hole two, par three, three hundred and eighty feet. This whole year, really just trying to navigate around this one tree on the right that we just flew past. And I'm, I can't spoil it because you've already seen it. We had a star frame last round for this hole. And I doubt we'll see that again, but I hope I'm proved wrong. I know everyone can do it. And that was a super early release, but sometimes in the woods, a worse shot turns out better than the intended shot. So he came through pretty good there and he has maybe like a long jump putt for two. 
I was almost happy with that release. I needed just a little bit more power. I'm in the center of the fairway, though. It looked like you threw it on a bit too knifey angle. Or the same angle with more power. I needed the same angle with just a little bit more power. It would have been good. Rick goes with a max. He's going to have a long look. That looks perfect. I was wrong. So good. It was really good, but it's like you need, you kind of need that knifey angle on this. Yeah. It's a really funky little hyzer hole for us because you almost want to throw an understable disc to get to the basket here and throw it on more of an angle and then have it finish kind of like trying to fight to the right but still hyzering left. So. Sometimes throwing a flippy disc, it'll go more left for you than a stable disc because it stays in the air longer. Pro tip by Simon Lazat. Try it at home, guys. Albert trying to give it a little bit of a run. He's going to be out, be about 20 feet from the pin. Ricky with a blue putter? Has yeah. that been a thing? I think it's a new thing. It's... I want to say it's a classic AVR. Oh, maybe. I don't remember him putting with a blue putter yesterday. I think he uses it for kind of his his long putts where he wants some more spin and a little bit more glide. Because I know I switch up my putters from uh, different distances. From long range, I like something that's pretty beat up that uh, that's easy to glide. Easy tappings here and... You see a bunch of pars already on the scorecard, and this is kind of going to be the name of the game today. We're on to hole three. It's par four, 760 feet. You're probably going to see a lot of rollers from these guys. Uh, looking down the fairway, it's, it's the first shot is pretty open, but then you have to contend with a bunch of trees, and then you see the basket right there. There is a drop off to the left. So you gotta be cautious of that. Albert throwing the same enforcer that he did on hole one. Turning it a bit too much, but he's gonna be at the top of the hill looking down the fairway. I'm going DD3 Cloudbreaker sidearm. And this disc right here, it started this, I started this week throwing it and it was pretty overstable and with all the rocks out here it has become a complete flip up driver ricky going roller with a star wraith he's been throwing this disc so well lately and that's a prime spot yeah really the ideal spot here and you probably threw like a 450 foot side arm there at least James going with, I don't know what disc, but I'd say Sidewinder. And he's just going to be a little bit behind Ricky, a little bit more right. All decent tee shots. Albert taking a wide sidearm, a wide to the, the left side, which you don't normally see. He gets up there. He's going to have a look. That shot was so close to being perfect. All he needed was just a millimeter of more turn. I told Simon he was going to love, love seeing this today. Okay, it wasn't as bad as I expected. It was a, I was very pinched off on the left side of the fairway. And basically, like, I, th that was the only shot I had. And I, ha I got a little bit of luck. And I was happy about it. And James didn't get very lucky there. No, a bit of unfortunate roll, especially because he threw like a really soft putter. You wouldn't expect that much action, but he has a lot of spin on the disc. And once it gets dancing, it's going. Once it gets dancing, it's going. I like it. Ricky is going to be just outside the circle there. 
Albert's going to have that drop off behind the basket. He makes the smart play, just lays up. Ricky has determination in his eyes. He does not go down the hill. So he has a blue, an orange, and a white putter. I'm pretty sure his orange ones are the ones he was using earlier this year. They might be a little beat up. James was just outside the circle, and he sailed it over top. I pick up a little bit of an unexpected birdie from where I was at. but Yeah, maybe with the hardest spot after the tee shot and with the best result off your upshot and the only birdie, taking a stroke on the card. Yeah, James and Ricky both threw very good shots, and they just found a little bit of trouble on their approaches. No bogeys, no damage, all good. We're on to hole four. Uh, par four, 675 feet. It's all about just getting into this initial landing zone. Roller is a popular play, as well as sidearm, backhand turnover. It's basically pick, pick whatever you want, pick your most confident shot, and get yourself in a position to where you can get a birdie. You're choosing another DD3. DD3. I feel like I get this a little bit high. It gets through the trees. I'm just going to be pinched off on the right side a little bit. But it's not a bad spot from right there. Albert has a sword in his hand. And he goes with the flat roll, flat to understable roller. And he rolls through the trees to the perfect wow. landing zone. That was also quite fortunate there. I don't know. I've never been long left in the woods, so I don't know how bad it is if you actually get stuck there. But Albert, no worries. Just sweet spot. And he's going to almost have like a jump putt from there. Playing with Ricky, it's kind of driving me crazy that he throws this wraith so well as a roller. Like, when he has that disc in his hand, you know that an incredible shot is coming. Wow. <laughs> James throwing that supposed sidewinder. And, oh, nice. Good dodge right there. But yeah, he's gonna be in a pretty decent spot as well. Right here, I have the new Evolution Link. And I'm really just trying to think I'm James Conrad when I'm throwing that shot. I heard from a couple of pros that sometimes they mentally become a different pro so they can throw a shot better. And what did James do there? I think James thought he was me. Or me. <laughs> Albert. With a harp. Albert just being Albert. Albert's being Albert. He's confident in himself. Be yourself, guys. Or be Albert. I don't know. Ricky giving a bit of an eagle run right there it's doable like i'm gonna try and figure out this round when he will use his witch putter he, i he, his favorite putter is to use is that green one it's the most understable one wait he has a green one too he just threw the green one oh, i thought it was blue that's a green one it's uh it's like the joma's electric green all right, back to the action, guys. Uh, we have Ricky tapping in for birdie. Albert going for birdie. And he gets it. What's his putt like? It's like a spinny Barry Schultz. Yeah, I thought it was like a little spinny Nate Sexton there. Spinny. It's like a combination of Barry Schultz and Nate Sexton.
And we're on to hole five, the first par five of the course, 780 feet. You're navigating through a tight tunnel uphill. It's really about the tee shot, getting in the middle of the fairway and then biting off enough distance to get to a spot where you feel comfortable approaching this very rocky green. I have an MD3 in my hand and that's an MD3 out of my hand. That looks like a really good shot. It scoots to a decent spot. I'm a little bit on the right side, but I am in the fairway, which I am happy about after after that. Albert doesn't get full commitment onto that shot. It's a little kick off a tree, but he'll be on the right side. No, it really seems like Albert's a lot more confident in his sidearm than his backhand, at least for the early start of the round here. That is the best drive I've ever seen on this hole. From right there, you have a legit eagle chance. Absolutely. He is about 50, 60 feet past the amp pad, which is it's bonkers. James is going to be not very happy there, but at least he didn't hit early. Albert just turning it over a little bit too much out of his hand. I'm a pinched up on the right side, so I'm just trying to throw an inside sidearm. Oh, that looked so good. He got a good quick kick, though. Shot straight down. Didn't do anything crazy. I'm in the middle. James doesn't have much from where he's at. He's going to have probably a a little bit of a scramble from where he's at next. Albert looks like he carried enough distance to give him a reasonable approach for his par. And we finally made it to Ricky's tee shot and he's attacking the screen. And <laughs> I, I, I don't know, I think his run up was a little bit compromised with this course there are so many rocks in the fairways so if you can you want to lean towards the standstill shot james was not obstructed by any rocks that's a great great shot after a scrambling up shot there his third shot was really really nice and he has actually a chance for birdie now from a not ideal drive. Oh, last one. Yeah, I, I feel like I pulled that shot a little bit right. Uh, I kind of got a little bit lucky through the trees on the right side, but I'll be just inside the circle off that shot. Ricky's got to be a bit frustrated here. Long putt for birdie after the most perfect drive I've ever seen on that hole. I want to note that Right there, Albert was flicking the shield, which is not an easy thing to do. Ricky, he's probably a little bit frustrated there because he had such an epic drive and he's not even going to get a birdie. It happens to all of us. Oh, James, usually like the just outside of the circle range is his his home. He's comfortable in that area. Oh, wow. You're picking up the lone birdie here. Slow mess. It's three in a row. Three birdies in a row. I was pretty pumped getting this one. And this stretch of holes, it's not, they're some of the easier holes on the course, but still, it's, they're, they're, they're not easy to birdie for sure. No, this every hole can get you out here. You can go and shoot 18 under. You can go and shoot 18 over just as easily. I think it's pretty I think it'd be easier to shoot 18 over. 
Hole six, par four, 625 feet. There's two gaps, but the, the right gap is definitely the more popular. Just trying to get in the fairway, throwing a straight shot that fades a little bit left, assuming you're a right-handed backhand player. Then you'll have a forehand or backhand Anheuser approach. This is a Neo Instinct. I just throw it a little bit too hard and a little bit too high. Gets a good kick though. I'm in the center of the fairway. I think you should throw a mid range on this hole. I think that's probably a good idea. Thanks for the advice, Simon. You're welcome. Albert throwing a good looking shot that just pushes a little bit too far straight. Ricky throwing T Bird. And this is a beautiful angle on this. Good hyzer. He's going to actually be a little bit left. And to access the next gap, he's probably going to have to like force over a sidearm. This, James is... That's perfect. Yeah, that was exactly the intended shot right there. You want to push it really straight and like hugging the right side rough. And uh, you all are not in a bad spot. All of you... All three of you guys that ended up a bit short have great sidearms to uh, scramble even a birdie from where you're at. I threw a max there. Turned it over too much. And if Albert put his shot together with mine, we'd be parked. Ricky kind of in a difficult spot here. It's a lot of Anheuser, but it is panning out. He'll just be outside the circle, which we all know is Ricky range. So James with a good chance here to get his first birdie and snag one on the card, maybe. Perfectly played. That had a small chance of bouncing into the basket. Very small chance. Albert with a harp puts it inside the circle. I'm from about 60 to 65 feet and almost got it. I had a, kind of a small gap. Let's put it left. No problem right there. It's the first big putt Ricky's made of the round. Beautiful extension. Oh, that last chain grab looks like, always so awesome. Ricky, great birdie pickup there. And lead card through six holes. Bowie free. James for birdie. There you go, James. Get on that birdie bus. I'm with a little bit of a tester here. There's something about par putts that aren't under the basket that always make you think. It is weird what, what runs through our heads while we line up a 20-foot par putt. Oh, See? we'll get up there. Like, look, Albert was... I bet you tons of things were running through his head. It's it's uh, not okay. It's really not okay. <laughs> Hole seven is a par three, at 370 feet. Third par three we've played so far, and it's all about getting out the initial gap, and then maybe getting down there for a putt. But the par threes on this course, you're not mad if you par them. No, round one I went. Completely too free. And Ricky asking for it not to hit anything, maybe the basket. That was close. Inside the circle, it's a great shot by Rick. That was a T bird now, right? I'm pretty sure that was a firebird. Wow, oh, he's not making those discs look that overstable. 
James going for the same shot as yesterday, and just a little bit too far to the right. He's at the initial gap, though. This was a Glow MD3 forehand. Left it just a little tight. This gap is, this gap is kind of one of the tighter gaps, even though it's early off the tee. It is. It's a lot downhill, but you got to push like left, left, left before you go at the very end right. And wow, that was like a second ace run here. That was a West Side Discs Otti by Albert. He almost dunks it for the ace, but he will be outside the circle. James doing something that he's not used to doing, hitting a tree. I was thinking in my head, I want this to go in. And then I threw it and I'm like, that's not gonna go in. <laughs> no, that looked like a complete committed layup. Albert from distance. Yeah. That's not a bazooka. He was Archer. trying something new, which I love. We all know Albert from the European Open. He's known for his bazooka. But I guess he's an archer now. The bazooka just had so much swag. It was unbelievable. I want to see the pose b before the disc goes in, though. Oh. That'd be bold. Come on, man. Come on, James. So you're saying just line up a bazooka and then putt? <laughs> no, I'm saying throw the putt instantly when it leaves your hand. Get into the bazooka pose and, like, Blast it while your disc hits the chains. That'd be next level. Yeah. That's what you gotta do to be like superhero swag. Maybe you should start doing it. Maybe. I thought about it. But it's kind <laughs> of his thing now, so I don't want to steal it. Hole eight, par five, 670 feet. So many rocks in the fairway. I'm from Boulder, Colorado, but this is uh, this is Boulder, Delaware. Not a good joke. Oh uh, my god, that was bad. That was really bad. But yeah, just a lot of guys are going to be going backhand, trying to get the late flip up and turn. It's really all about just being somewhere near the fairway so you're able to scramble distance off your next shot. This is kind of Ricky's play, I think, on this hole, is just to blast one into the right side. And there's gaps up there, so from there he can throw some weird funky spike hyzer or turn over sidearm or overhead. So maybe he's just trying to throw it as hard as he can and hope something good happens. Like that, for example. I don't think there's trees on the right side. I think it's just an illusion. I did the same thing round two. I, I threw it as hard as I could. And it went through everything and actually ended up in the left rough instead of the right. This is a cloud breaker and it is getting so understable. I was not expecting it to flip that much, but it carries good distance. I'm going to be on the left side. James with a wraith here. There it is. And he needs some flip or not to hit a tree. Gets a ton of distance. That was technically the best tee shot. Not the best result, but it was the best throw. Yes. I have a little bit of a compromised lie here. And I go like overhand and I hit a pencil tree. And shoot to the right. Ricky throwing <laughs> a wide hyzer. And not hitting a thing. When I saw that him do that, I'm like, what do you see? Well, I think his, the game plan is just to get as far down there as you possibly can. And if you see one gap, oh no. Oh, what is happening here? The rough is just not even rough. It's just another fairway. It's fairways. The rough is fairways? Yes. <laughs> James. 
he didn't find the rough fairway, unfortunately. But that that was James's second shot, so he still has a good opportunity to get a birdie. And I throw a forehand roller. I felt like that was good, but... What did you say there? I didn't hear it. I, I said something about hitting another pencil tree. Oh. Vertically. Nice! You hit the... I hit the second tier. That's the Pyramid of Egypt, except it's the Pyramid of Delaware. I don't know whose joke was worse. I tried to be yours. You did. <laughs> James with a little overhead, a little thumber action. I wanted Albert to make that to see if he would do a bazooka slash bow and arrow. <laughs> What's the next thing? Bazooka, bow and arrow, and the next one is? Arm cannon. Great putt by James for a birdie. Oh, that's so cool in slow mo. Love it. Great putt by James. Tap and birdie for Albert. Three birdies on hole eight. He's tapping in a par. Pencil tree par. Pencil tree par. All right. Through eight holes, we have Ricky Wysocki leading the event. I'm in second place. Albert playing a really solid round so far at four under. And Joel Freeman is minus three. And Lazad is sneaking oh, up yeah, the leaderboard. Woo! Oh, man. Like and subscribe, guys. Thanks for watching. And we are back. <laughs> We're on to hole number nine. Is a par four, 555 feet. The tee shot here is to throw something straight, land in the landing zone, or you can be throwing a forehand shot that pushes straight and kind of finishes right if you are wanting to be a little bit more aggressive. I know Albert has a lot of confidence in his forehand shot. He's going enforcer. He gets a stand up that is pushing far right. And everyone loves it. That is in the prime location right there. I don't know what to say anymore. I got ahead of myself there. Of course, we have one more hole to play. And thank God we have one more hole to play. Seeing some great tee shots. James goes with a rock three flip up. He's gonna have a very good uh, position moving forward on this hole. I have a little bit of an early release, but don't hit any major trees. I'll be pinched off on the right side, but I might have something from there. Ricky doesn't get enough turn on that shot. Maybe right side, maybe a long outside look. Still putting for birdie though, and that's at the end of the day, that's all we ever asked for. This shot I was not very happy with. I had a pretty good gap and I turn over my sidearm way too much. At least I'm in the center of the fairway and I have a little bit of a I have a little bit of a look from where I'm at. I'm sure James didn't really want to do that. Through a great drive and just turned his shot over too much. He didn't really want to do that. No, he didn't. He definitely didn't want to do that. I think Albert wanted to do that. Yeah, Albert and Ricky both had four down right now for the round, and Albert's sitting in prime position to go to five. Decent run there. Is Dees. Ricky has a very good framed look off the cage just trying to go with a more of a spin putt than what we're used to seeing James needs this for par that was for birdie oh you're right sorry 
But James gets his par. No harm, no foul. I'm just messing up one after the other here. Albert taps in for his birdie. Great front nine by Albert. Five down. He can keep that pace going. Double digits. You with a pretty solid three down for the front nine. Ricky shooting four and James one down with the lone bogey so far. Yeah, guys, thank you for tuning in for the front nine of round two of the Delaware Disc Golf Challenge. Special thank you to Jomez Pro Founders Club. We'll be back for the back nine. Make sure you like and subscribe and do all that good stuff. Do it now, not one hole ago. Simon Lazat, Eagle McMahon, Crush Boys commentary from beautiful, sunny Delaware. Thank you, Jomez.